But the Queensland team, as I mentioned, here it is, named this morning. What do we think of the Maroons and what Billy has done with his side? Well, I think they've thrown loyalty out the window. No ponger after that game he played two weeks ago, one of the best individual performances I've seen all year. I know he got a knock the other night. No Capel, no Gagai. 22 origin straight. Has got them out of so much, I'm surprised they haven't stuck more solid. Ready? Oh, I'm, I've got to say, I don't like agreeing with Buzz, but I agree with him on Gago. I'm surprised that Dane Gago isn't there. I understand Callum Ponga not being there, given the, the, the concerns over the HIAs he's had and how good Reese Walsh is going. But the Gago one surprised me, yeah. One of our strongest forward packs I've seen. It's, it's, a, good a, uh, it's a great forward pack. You a lot right? of workers in there, yeah. Uh, uh, and I like the team, Buzz. I really loyalty, do. mate. You've always been big on loyalty, you guys. We'll argue about this later. We're going to go into the Queensland camp. Peter Padell is at the Caxton Hotel in Brisbane where the Maroons squad have gathered to for their first dinner. Bomber, some massive changes uh, for the winning Queensland side. Um, were you surprised by it? Yeah, I was a little surprised, Braith, and good evening, guys. Look, here at the, the home of Alf, Al, Alfie Langer here at the Caxton Hotel, just down <laughs> from the home of Queensland Rugby League, Suncorp Stadium, where the Maroons gathered today. And I have to say, guys, one of the biggest selection shake-ups in Queensland's 43-year history. Seven changes, two major bombshells, the dropping of Kalen Ponga last year's Game 3 hero, and, of course, the origin specialist, Dane Gagai, has been so good for the Maroons. 22 games, eight consecutive series. He's gone as well, as is Kurt Capewell, the Broncos' war horse in the back row. But... They've ushered in the winds of change, guys. Some new faces. Reese Walsh will debut in place of Kalen Ponga at fullback. Hamaso Tabiwai Fado will replace Dane Gagai in the centres. And then, of course, up front, you've got Dave Fafita back in the back row alongside Tom Gilbert. And in the front row, the post Josh Papali era, Tom Flegel, the Broncos enforcer. He plays his second game and his first in two years. Can he step up in the absence of Papa? But the big debate here, guys, today in camp at Camp Maroon was the treatment of Caelan Ponga. I spoke to the Newcastle Knights today. They were disappointed and quite shocked by the demotion of Ponga. They said that medically he was cleared by the Knights doctors. They gave him the green light to be picked for Origin 1. But Billy Slater and the Maroon selectors had concerns about a number of factors. They were multifaceted, but a duty of care was one consideration for Billy Slater when we asked him today at his 15-minute press conference. He was quite eloquent, but also insistent that he made the call, he took full responsibility for it, and he is backing Reese Walsh, the Broncos' young gun at 20 years old, to make his origin debut for Queensland. Now, guys, also interesting, I've got some breaking news for the Maroons. New Queensland CEO Ben Eichen, he started at the QRL last Friday. One of his primary obje objectives will be to extend the contract of Billy Slater. Now, he's off contract at the end of this series. He's been quite hesitant, Billy, to commit to the Maroons until the end of this series when he'll start new talks. But I'm told that Ben Eichen is ready to table a new deal. He wants Billy to coach on. The Storm have been mentioned as a possible target for Billy Slater long-term post Craig Bellamy. But the Maroons... They want Billy Slater to stay here. Billy says, if I'm not the right man for the job, I'll leave. But Ben Ike and the new QRL CEO believes Billy Slater is the right man for the job for the long haul. Good on you, Peter. Thank you for that. Thanks, Braith. Yes, the big news there. Uh, Benny Ike and trying to keep Billy Slater at the Maroons uh, for an extended period of time. We'll get into that a little later. And also the, the team changes and the selections from Billy. Let's take a look at the New South Wales Blues team for game one. Now, a couple of surprises. How did we see this lineup? Uh, well, obviously, Tavita was a bit of a shock coming, came from left field, but uh, Jake Trebojevic's unavailability has contributed to that. Um, Hudson Young in the back row, he's been playing well, Hudson Young. Um, and Cam Murray, I'm surprised Cam Murray's on the bench. I, I think Cam Murray will start the game and, and maybe Young will drop back to the bench. But um, look, it's a decent team. Obviously, Tommy Trevojevic in the centre, as long as he got through on Sunday, he was going to was going to be straight into that team. And that's the danger for me in this team, that, or the potency of it, the mitchell Trevojevic combination in the centres. I mean, that's just destroyed Queensland a couple of years ago, and that's the concern as a Queenslander. I'm worried about that. Yeah, what I like is this our 2021 New South Wales backline that won the series. Very close. Very um, close. I think it is. I think it's identical. Yeah. Um, and you saw how well and... Uh, Latrell spoke early in the year about him and Turbo and the centres together. and So there's not going to have to do a lot of combination mm. 
ball stuff at training this week. They've been there, they've done it. All right. James Hooper is at the True Blues dinner in Sydney. Hoops, the Blues have arrived. Take us through today's team announcement. Yeah, evening break, only 10 nights and counting until the jewel in the crown, State of Origin, is here. It's one of the biggest games of the season in Adelaide. And for the Blues, look, the big talking points, no question, are three debutants. Nico Hines, Hudson Young, and the bombshell selection today was Tavita Pangai Jr., the Bulldogs enforcer. Then there's the return of the big guns. Tommy Turbo kicked the door off the hinges yesterday for Manly, had to be included. Latrell Mitchell back into the side. Also the Fox, Josh Adokar. The debutants first. And when we're talking about Nico Hines, look, his form has been so irresistible over the course of the last 18 months. The Blues simply had to include him. He's the reigning Dally M medalist. There has been a lot of positivity around Nico's inclusion in the setup, he will wear jumper number 17. And the main question now is how the Blues coaching staff intend to utilise Nico during the game. Next up, the Canberra Raiders hard nut, Hudson Young. Ricky Stewart has been saying for a number of seasons now that this bloke is purpose built for state of origin football. Brad Fittler clearly agrees. He's pitchforked him straight into the New South Wales starting side. He'll line up on the left edge for the Blues. Now, the controversial selection is Tavita Pangai Jr., no question. The reason it's controversial is, look, he hadn't been spoken about at all in the lead-up to this game. Jake Trebojevic just sustained a little calf niggle in round 12 yesterday. That meant that the Blues had to look at alternative options. Tavita is the player that they decided to land on. He will line up in the starting front row alongside his ex-Brisbane Broncos teammate, Payne Haas. Plenty of power, plenty of aggression and a fair dash of mad in that combination. <laughs> but the reason why it's so controversial is because Tavita, over the course of the fi last five years, has at stages declared that he actually supports Queensland. At one point, he said he would even pull on the maroon jumper at some stage if he got the opportunity. Now, we tracked Tavita down today. He said he regrets those comments. At the time, he was young, he was immature. Greg Inglis was his favourite player and he simply wanted to support whatever side Greg Inglis was playing for. So that's all been swept aside now. He's addressed it with his coach, Brad Fittler, in camp today. Freddie told him to speak about it, nip it in the bud, and then immediately shift his focus to what has got to happen in Origin 1, Braith. Thank you, Hoops. Great work.